Hi, boys and girls. How are you today? Look what I have. Do you know what kind of creature these are? Let me get one close and you can look at it. Do you know what that is? That's right. That's an octopus. Octopus. How many arms or tentacles, these little things that are coming out, how many tentacles does an octopus have? Should we count and find out? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you have eight arms? Miss Kathy only has two, but an octopus has eight. Can you imagine? And do you see, do you see the little dots on each of his little arms? Can you see those dots? Let me show you what those are. I'll show you a picture of a real octopus. Oh, can you see those, those little things on the bottom of his tentacle? Can you see those? Those are like suction cups. That's how an octopus moves around. He hooks those onto rocks and can pull himself along. Do you know where an octopus would live? Would he live in a house? In a tree? Where does an octopus live? Oh, Miss Kathy, an octopus lives in the water. That's one of the creatures that God made that lives in the water. Now, look how many octopuses. That's a weird word, isn't it? Octopuses. Do you know if you have more than one octopus? You have octopuses. Or you could have octopi. What should we call them? I kind of think octopi sounds funny. Do you? Should we call them octopi? Let's call them octopi. How many octopi does Miss Kathy have? Should we count them? Okay, let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine octopuses or octopi. Nine of them. And boy, they all have eight arms. Now, we're going to see how well, because we haven't done this in a while, we're going to see how well you remember your signs, your color signs. Do you remember what color this is? Something you squeeze to get the juice out of. Can you find the orange octopus? Where's he at? Where's he at? Stop, Miss Kathy, there he is. There's our orange octopus. Isn't he cute? Can you find the, oh, do you remember? Remember, it starts with a Y. See the Y? So it starts like, yeah. Do you see an octopus that would start with that color? Yeah. Can you sign yellow? Yellow. Put your hand up. Put these three fingers down yellow. Where's our, that, there's our yellow one. There's our yellow one. Yellow octopus. Okay, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven octopi left. Seven. Do you see the, do you remember that sign? Like I have something on my shirt that I'm pulling off. Do you remember that? White. Can you do that? Just grab at your shirt. White. Do you see the white octopus? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where? Ah, there he is. So let's see. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take away one white octopus. And how many do we have left? That's right. We have six left. Let's find. Oh, this is a hard one. Do you remember we kind of made a V? 
and we held it upside down. Do you remember what color that is? I'll give you a hint. It starts like this letter in sign language. P. 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 Purple. Good job. Can you do that? Purple octopus. Let's get Mr. Purple octopus off of there. Okay, we had six. We're taking away Mr. Purple Octopus. How many do we have left? One, two, three, four, five octopus. Where is the... Do you remember that sign? Where is the green octopus? You see him? Do you find green? Where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he at? Ah, green. Five octopus. Take away Mr. Green Octopus. How many octopi do we have left? Four. Where is Do you remember that sign? I'm so blue. How do you do? Can you do that? Put your finger in and just shake your hand back and forth like that. Can you do that? Let's see. Blue. Blue. Can you find blue? Do you see? There he is. Okay, so four. Take away blue octopus. Now how many do we have? Three. Good job. Okay, keep that same hand you did with blue. Okay. And go down your cheek. This is your cheek. Brown. Brown. Do you see the brown octopus? Brown. Three. Take away one, two. Remember my eyebrow? Do you see the bl black octopus? Can you do that? Can you point up there? Can you point to your eyebrow? Black. Two, take away one. And we have one. red octopus and that's what our story is about today this little guy this red octopus whose name is gustavius octopus but everybody just calls him gus now remember i told you they have little suction cups on the end well gus had them too and gus didn't use those little suction pads very well because Gus was a grabby octopus. He was very greedy and he was very grabby. And they called him Grabby Gus. Now, one night his mommy was pouring out some, scooping out some ice cream for mommy octopus and daddy octopus and sister octopus and Gus octopus. Well, he kept whining. She got more than me. Daddy got more than me. And mommy was making them as even as she could. Well, before mommy knew what happened, I'm not going to show you what I'm doing. Before mommy even knew what happened, Grabby Gus grabbed everybody's ice cream. He grabbed, he grabbed mommy's ice cream. He grabbed sister's ice cream. He grabbed his ice cream and he grabbed daddy's. I got all the ice cream. I got all the ice cream. I got all the ice cream. And he went and ate it all. He ate it all. But you know what? After Grabby Gus ate everybody's ice cream, you would think he'd be feeling pretty good having all that ice cream. Well, he didn't. He didn't feel very good inside at all. And mommy and daddy were so sad. And so was Sister Octopus. Well, Gus decided, I better go outside and play. And he went out to play. And who did he see coming by but two of his best friends? Sammy Shark was coming by to play. Hello, I'm Sammy Shark. And Stripey Fish was coming by. Hi, I'm Stripe. And they were playing. And what they decided they wanted to play that day was they decided they wanted to play with their trucks and with their school buses and all their little their, their little um, cars and stuff. 
And of course, Gus started grabbing all the toys. I mean, he grabbed the school bus. He grabbed the little taxi. Wait till you see. He grabbed the fire truck and he grabbed the dump truck. And before you know it, He had all the trucks. Poor Sharky didn't have any. And Stripe didn't have any either because Grabby Gus was playing with them all. Well, his two friends just left. They didn't want to play with someone who was so mean and so grabby. Well, the next day, Everybody got up to go to church, and Gus got all ready for church and looked really nice and everything, and he went to church, and he went into his Sunday school class. Now, his Sunday school teacher was Miss Allie. Hello, boys and girls. Isn't she pretty? She was Gus's Sunday school teacher, and some of the friends that he had in his Sunday school class, he had... Yellowfin, that's his name, Yellowfin. Hello, I'm Yellowfin. And Tommy Turtle, Tommy Turtle was so slow when he moved around. Well, Miss Allie put out all the crayons so the boys and girls could all start coloring their Sunday school picture. And so she said, now everybody share the crowns. We have a whole box of crowns. Everybody share. Now, what do you think? Dumb, you're not allowed to peek. What do you think Grabby Gus did to the crowns? Now, remember what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to share them, right? Well, oh, let me put one on here too. Grabby Gus I got all the crayons, I got all the crayons, I got all... Well, poor, poor Tommy Turtle didn't get any crayons to play with. And little, little Yellowfin didn't have any either. And you know what? Even though Gus had all the crayons, do you think he felt very good? Nobody wanted to sit beside him. Nobody wanted to talk to him, and nobody wanted to color beside him because he was being so grabby. Well, after Sunday school class, Gus was feeling really sad. And Miss Allie, his Sunday school teacher, came over and said, Gus, what's the matter? Nobody likes me. Well, Gus... You're so greedy. You forgot what Jesus said. I forgot what Jesus said. Yes, you forgot our memory verse. And they were learning a new memory verse. And that verse was, Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Gus, you'll feel better inside if you learn how to give and you're not always taking stuff for yourself. That's why you don't feel happy inside, Gus. You need to remember what Jesus said, that it's more blessed when we give something to someone than when we take everything to ourselves. Well, Miss Allie, and Gus prayed, and Gus really prayed to do a better job. Well, Sunday school was over, and at the back of their big church, they had their hymn books out because everybody liked to get a hymn book so they could sing all the songs. Well, don't you know? What do you think? What do you think Grabby Gus did? He started grabbing those hymn books and put them on those little suction cups that he had. And everybody was just rolling their eyes. And Miss Allie thought, oh, 
Gus, you didn't learn anything. You have a hymn book in each one of your eight arms. What are you going to do with that many hymn books? Well, what Gus did was when someone came to the door, he took one of the hymn books and handed it to them. Would you like a hymn book? And when the next person came in, he handed them a hymn book. And when some other people came in, and he stood at the back of the church and gave out all the hymn books. And you know what? After church that day, Gus felt so good inside because Gus learned a very important lesson. He learned that it's better when we give to people than when we're always taking. And sometimes it's hard when brother or sister takes our toy or something. We want to grab it back. But God says it's more blessed to give to someone, to share with someone, than to keep everything to ourselves. And we're going to do a Bible story today. That was a silly story about Gus, wasn't it? But we're going to do a Bible story, and that's a true story about this man. Now, can you tell what his problem might be? He's not walking around, is he? He's lying on this mat. Well, this man, we don't know his name in the Bible. We just know he was lame. Lame. That means he couldn't walk. And, and he couldn't walk ever since he was a little baby. Like, he never could walk. He couldn't run around and play when he was little. He never could walk. And every day, they would take him to the temple. The temple was like their church. And they would put him outside the temple. And do you remember? Remember we talked about this box? Zadaka box? Zadaka box? Remember what we would put in there? Offerings, like money to help people. Well, this lame man would sit outside the temple and he would ask everybody that went by to give him some money. He would put out his hands and say, could you help me, please? Alms, alms, alms was another word for money. Could you please give me some alms, some offering? Well, some people would give to him. Some people wouldn't. Well, these two people came by, and they were very special friends of Jesus. Peter and John. They were disciples. They were friends of Jesus when Jesus was on the earth. And the lame man said, alms, alms. And Peter stopped and looked at him. And the man must have got very excited. Maybe he was going to give him something. Well, Peter didn't have anything to give. But this is what he said. I'm going to read it to you from the Bible. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. I don't have any money. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, he didn't have money to give, but he did have Jesus in his heart. And he said, Jesus can help you to walk. And he reached down and he grabbed that man by the hand, that man who had never walked. And the Bible says that man, can you believe it? stood up for the first time ever. And the Bible says he was leaping and jumping and praising God. And everybody in the temple, they knew this man. They knew he had never walked before. And they said, how are you walking? How are you walking? And he said, well, that man, that man Peter over there. And Peter said, oh, no. No, that was Jesus that helped you walk. And do you know what? The people who were at the temple that day, they started believing in Jesus because of the special miracle that Peter did. Now, Peter didn't have money to give, but he did have something to give. Now, I'm putting, I'm putting some words because we are going to sing this Bible story. Do you like to sing? We're going to sing this Bible story and you're going to help me. And I'm going to put the words up there for the big kids just in case. And I don't know if they can see them, but we'll try. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Peter and John went to pray. 
they met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms and held out his palms. Now this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What did he do? He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Have you ever heard that song before? That's a fun song. Now, if you don't know the song, I do want you to help me on the last part. We'll do it one more time. Walking, make your fingers walk. He went walking and leaping. I want you to jump up in the air, leaping and praising God. I want you to use your hands and praise God, okay? He went walking and leaping and praising God walking, jump, and leaping, and praising God. Okay, can you do that part when we get to it? Can you do that? Okay, we'll start from the very beginning. I'm going to be watching. I hope you're leaping and praising God. Okay, here we go. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms and held out his palms. And this is what Peter did say. Don't have any money. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Are you ready? He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Let's do this page again. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. A new verse. Easy book. Can you read that word? Acts. Acts. 20, a two and a zero, 20. 35, a 3 and a 5, 35, B, because it's the last part of the verse, okay? Acts 20, 35, B. Acts 20, 35, B. Remember the words, remember the words, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35b. Listen to it one more time. Remember the words. Remember the words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35b. Okay, we've got to learn a new sign. Make two like fists. Okay, keep your thumbs on the end like that, okay? Now, when we remember something, we use our brain. And where is our brain? Okay, so take your hand and take your thumb and touch your, your head, your forehead up here. Remember. 
Okay, and you're going to take it down and land it on your other thumb. Remember. 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 Try it. Two hands. Remember. Remember. Remember the words. Remember the words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35b. Remember the words. Remember the words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35b. Remember the words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. To give than to keep everything for ourselves. Let's try that one more time, okay? Remember, remember. Remember the words. Remember the words. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35b. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down and shaken together. Luke 6 and 38a. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. Luke 6 and 38a. One more time. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. Luke 6 and 38a. Okay, boys and girls, this week, let's try not to be grabby Gus. Let's try to be a sharing Gus and learning that it's more blessed to give something to someone, to share with someone, than it is just to keep to ourselves. And even if you don't have anything to give to someone else, you can do like Peter and John did, and you can share Jesus with someone. Because if you have Jesus in your heart, you have the best gift in the world. And that's a gift that everyone would love. I love you, boys and girls. And we will see you next week.